Standing at a height of 1,085 metres, Snowdon is the highest and most popular mountain in Wales. Over time it has been shaped into a starfish arrangement of glacial hollows, knife edge ridges and sheer walls of rock that enclose deep valleys and lakes. The pathways featured in this guide explore some of the most popular walking routes to the summit. Starting in the northwest, the Llamberis path is probably one of the earliest routes and for most of its length runs close to the Snowdon Mountain Railway. To the east the Peg and Miners tracks both begin at Penna Pass and provide a circular route for walkers. From the southeast the Watkin Path rises in the Gwynedd Valley and presents one of the steepest ascents as it climbs through over 1,000 metres. Finally, from the west, the Snowdon Ranger Path was one of the earliest routes to the summit and offers sweeping views of Athlin Cretlin and Cum Clogwin. Over the years, industry has exploited Snowdon in a variety of ways and the hillsides still reveal evidence of past attempts to extract the mountain's natural resources, such as copper and slate. Spoil heaps from both enterprises still leave a permanent reminder of the demands of the Industrial Revolution. And the featured routes in this guide offer ample opportunity to explore old mine workings, crushing houses and ruined barracks. Most of the mountain's main footpaths converge on the summit cairn. Surveys have shown that during peak periods up to 1,500 walkers can make the ascent each day. These numbers are further increased when, weather permitting, the Snowdon Mountain Railway is operating. In recent years, these large visitor numbers have added to the growing problem of soil erosion. And the National Park Authority has found it necessary to protect many of the routes by constructing walls and fences and laying flagstone paths. The pig track starts at Penna Pass, where the Payne Display car park fills up very quickly. When full, the park and ride bus service offers a good alternative. Facilities at Penna Pass include a cafe and toilets, together with a public telephone and message board, while just across the road is the popular youth hostel. The pig track begins at the far corner of the upper car park, and although it starts at a height of 359 metres above sea level, it still offers a rugged and challenging route to the summit. Shortly after leaving Penna Pass, the path climbs through a boulder field as it runs below the western edge of a ridge that leads up to Creep Gore. Off to the right is the glacial, U-shaped valley of Flamberry's Pass. Some uncertainty exists as to how the pig track got its name. Many believe that it comes from Bolchemoch, Pass of the Pigs, while another suggestion is that it was named after the nearby Penagurid Hotel. After clearing the boulder field, the path levels out for a little while, before starting a steady climb towards Bolchemoch. Conditions underfoot are generally good along most of this lower section as the National Park Authority has carried out major repairs to the path. As the track continues to contour the hillside, the unmistakable outline of Creep Gorch now dominates the horizon. After passing through another boulder field, we arrive at a set of flagstone steps that have been cut into the rock.
At the top of the steps, the path opens out onto a grassy knoll that offers sweeping views back along the hillside to Penna Pass and across the valley to the Gledders. We now arrive at the start of a steep zigzag section that involves an ascent of about 200 metres. This is a good place to pause for a little while to look back and appreciate the route that we've just walked. Eventually the path emerges from a narrow gully to arrive at Bolche Moor, the Pass of Pigs. It is here that the track cuts through to the south side of the ridge and emerges high above the waters of Llinlladau. At this point a path leads up onto the Creeb Gorch Ridge Walk, a route that is not recommended for the inexperienced or faint-hearted. The pig bears sharply to the right and runs along the hillside high above the waters of Llinlladau, with the miners' track and causeway far below. The gradient rises gently along this section and up ahead we are offered our first glimpse of the summit of Snowdon, which up to now has been hidden behind Creep Gorch. Looking back along the path, you were rewarded with fine views towards Moyle Shabbard. The path now begins to rise more steeply and conditions underfoot become somewhat rougher. After crossing some large slabs, we soon arrive at a much rockier section where in poor weather, conditions underfoot can be quite slippery. Across the lake, the sheer precipices of Athluith rise to 898 metres, and according to Arthurian legend, the Knights of the Round Table now lie resting in a small cave in the rock face. The full majesty of the Snowdon Massif now opens up ahead, with Llyn Glaslin nestling at the foot of the mountain. Below the pig, the miner's track can be seen rising up to the shores of the lake. The way ahead now becomes indistinct for a little while as it runs through a rocky section and in poor visibility, several cairns help mark the route. The track continues to pick its way through the rocks and after bearing sharply to the right at a large cairn, arrives high above the waters of Thling Glaslin. Below on the shoreline, the miner's track can be seen running past the ruins of a miner's barracks before climbing up to join the pig. Although several cairns help mark the route along this section, the junction with the miner's track is a very useful landmark. The paths meet at the top of a steep scree slope and this intersection marks the start of a strenuous ascent to the summit. In fine weather, you are rewarded with stunning views over the sheer rock faces of the Snowdon Horseshoe. The way ahead now runs close to the open shafts of the Britannia Copper Mine, and great care should be taken along this section, especially in poor visibility. The gradient now becomes much steeper, 
and some scrambling is called for as the path climbs through a badly eroded section. And it is here that the National Park Authority are engaged in a program of footpath restoration. Eventually the pig track arrives at the foot of the famous zigzag. And this is a good place to pause for a final view over the Llywydd Ridge before starting the steep climb up the flagstone steps. This lower section of the zigzag has been edged with rock-filled gabions to prevent the scree from engulfing the path. At the top of the energy-sapping footpath, we arrive at the eight-foot-high bulk glass monolith. During the winter months, the zigzag becomes a notorious accident black spot. When the steps are covered in snow and ice, they should be left to properly equipped, experienced walkers. In poor visibility, the monolith is an invaluable landmark, while in fine weather it provides a superb vantage point over the Kriebgorch Ridge. At Bulch Glass, the pig track joins with the Llamberis path coming up from the right. The path now follows a line along the edge of the ridge, just above the mountain railway. From the top of the zigzag, the summit is an easy 15-minute walk away. The minus track starts from the far end of the lower car park at Penna Pass and begins as a broad, well-defined path that rises to the shores of Llyn Lladaw. The track up to the lake is almost a road, and though eroded in some places, it offers safe and pleasant walking conditions for visitors with little experience of the mountains. The path was constructed in the 18th century in order to bring copper ore down from the Britannia mine that was situated higher up on Snowdon. Along this early section there are views back towards Kabelkirig and across the valley to Mol Shabbat. The path at this point is made up of a very hard acidic rock called rhyolite that weathers very slowly and has withstood the footsteps of many walkers. At a height of about 400 metres, the track bears sharply to the right, and the full majesty of Etlwyth, the summit of Snowdon, and the Kriebgorch Ridge are revealed ahead. These peaks form the famous Snowdon Horseshoe. On the far side of the valley is a large outcrop of dolerite, whose hexagonal columns of volcanic rock are similar to those found at the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland. The track now passes above the waters of Llyn Tain, the smallest of the three lakes to be found along the route. And on the shoreline are the remains of a miner's barracks. The first buildings were built in 1840 and consisted of a series of one-room cottages where the miners stayed during the week. The path continues to rise gently as it contours the hillside above the lake and several outcrops of striated quartz can be seen along this section. The going now becomes steeper as it rises towards Llinsada and the way ahead is dominated by the sheer rock faces of Atluith. The rather unsightly pipeline that runs down the valley to the left supplies water to the Cum Dulli hydroelectric power station in Nantgwinnant. 
As the path begins to level out, the summit of Snowdon comes into view once more. And just before a green valve house, the track splits into two, with the left-hand path taking walkers up onto the Slewith Ridge. The miner's track bears off to the right and soon arrives at the shores of Llyn Sladau. At this point there are fine views up to Creed Gore and across the water towards the summit of Snowdon. Originally flat bottom boats were used to cross the lake, but after one capsized with the loss of its valuable load of copper ore, the ferry was replaced with this more reliable stone causeway. The path continues to hug the shoreline and swings around in a large horseshoe as it approaches the ruins of the Britannia copper mine's crushing plant. The mill was powered by a water wheel that was fed by a leet that ran down from Slinglaslin. Copper was mined higher up on the slopes and a Telfer cableway carried the ore down to the crushers. In its day this was one of the most modern plants in the country and in later years the mill switched to electric power when a large generator was fitted to the water wheel. Today the derelict buildings provide a reminder of Snowden's industrial past. Just after the ruins the path swings sharply to the right. And having climbed only 80 metres since leaving Penna Pass, the way ahead now becomes much steeper, providing the first real ascent. At the top of this section, the track skirts around a large rock barrier that helps to contain the waters of Llyn Glaslin, the third lake to be found along the route. Glaslin translates to Blue Lake, with its colour being due to the copper salts that have leached into the water. The path contours the shoreline and arrives at the remains of yet more mine buildings that mark the start of a 400 metre climb to Bulch Glass. The first part of the ascent is over 120 metres of scree slope and the National Park Authority has carried out extensive work along this section with the construction of flagstone steps to help with the steep climb. At the top of the scree the miners track joins up with the previously seen pig track for the final ascent to the summit. The summit of Snowdon is the most popular peak in Wales. The mountain attracts over half a million visitors a year. Many make it to the top on foot via one of the main walking routes. And here they can be joined by up to a further 1,500 visitors each day when the Snowdon Mountain Railway is running trains to the summit. It's not unusual for the mountain to be shrouded in cloud or mist. But in fine weather the views from the triangulation point are stunning. To the north you can look down over the Clogwin with Lamberis and Llyn Padden far below. To the east is the Creeb Gorch Ridge with the Pig and Miners track rising up from Penna Pass. In the south, the Watkin Path can clearly be seen climbing up the western flank of Fluid. While to the west, the panorama opens up over Llyn Cwetlin and the Nantle Valley.
The old station and cafe building, once referred to by Prince Charles as Wales' highest slum, has now been replaced by the purpose-built visitor centre, Havre Rurry. Following a two-year battle against some of the worst weather on record, it was finally opened in June 2009 by the First Minister for Wales, the Right Honourable Rodri Morgan. The building provides an opportunity to learn more about the mountain's significance as a recreational and environmental resource, with much of the interpretation being built into the fabric of the structure. Constructed at a cost of over £8 million, Havre Rurry has to be able to withstand winds of over 150 miles an hour and temperatures of minus 20 degrees. Sitting just 20 metres below the summit, the granite walls, roof and floors are built with stone from Blyneye for Stenyog and Portugal. While internally, the building is lined with Welsh oak. Facilities in the building include public conveniences, together with a well-stock gift shop. Unlike the old building, these services are available even if the mountain railway isn't running. One of the building's most dominant features is the window on the world wall of glass that offers sweeping views of a cum clogwind together with the ranger and read the paths. In fine condition, Snowden offers visitors spectacular views in all directions, but it should be remembered that the weather can change remarkably quickly, and anyone visiting the summit should be suitably prepared. The Llamberis path is accessed via a side road that runs from opposite the Royal Victoria Hotel. But before starting out, it's worth making a short detour under the 14-arched viaduct that carries the Snowdon Mountain Railway to visit the Kainat Maud waterfall. The powerful cascade drops over 20 metres into a large plunge pool. And this torrent of water is at its most spectacular after heavy rains. The Llamberis path starts at a gate and cattle grid at the end of the side road. Initially, the route winds its way up a steep metal road that offers views across the valley to the old slate works. After turning left off the road, a signpost points the way to the summit and this is where the footpath really begins. Although the Slamberis path is one of the longest routes to the summit, it does provide a relatively easy ascent. Conditions underfoot are generally stony, but well defined. The path rises gently along this early section, then after crossing some boggy ground, begins to climb more steeply. Off to the right, the mountain railway is never very far away as it ferries passengers to and from the summit. As the path climbs towards Halfway House, the towering precipices of the Clogwin begin to dominate the skyline. The mountain railway now crosses over our route to run above the path. The way ahead continues to climb steadily and it's worth stopping for a moment to appreciate the views back over the lower section towards Lamberis. The 
the going underfoot is still quite broad and stony, and at the height of 530 metres, we arrive at the appropriately named Halfway House. The present stone structure replaced an old zinc shed that blew away during severe storms. In years gone by, the building used to provide a stopping off point for climbers en route to Snowdon's rock faces. And during the summer months, it's possible to purchase refreshments here. Outside, the terrace provides a photo opportunity and vantage point for viewing the Clogwin, together with Moyle King Horion across the valley to the right. Conditions underfoot remain good after leaving halfway, and just above the path, the mountain railway continues to carry visitors to the summit. The way ahead now becomes more strenuous as the gradient becomes much steeper. And we soon arrive at a restored section of flagstone path that rises up to Clogwin Station. Off to the right, Llyn Ardi can be seen nestling below the precipices of the Clogwin. The path levels out at the top of the flagstone section and once again passes under the railway line close to Clogwin Station, which provides a stopping off point for visitors wishing to see the mountain the easy way. After passing under the railway line, the path turns sharply to the right and runs very close to the edge, where there are fine views down into Cum Hetiae and Llamberis Pass. The path now rises steadily as it climbs above the railway, and this section offers sweeping views in all directions. To the north, we can look back over the Llamberis path and the route that we have travelled so far. To the west lies Cum Clogwin and Manith Drusicoid. While to the east, the rolling hills of the Gleders come into view. As the gradient begins to level out, the Snowdon Ranger path can be seen coming up over the top of the Clogwin, with the little walked 726 metre Moyle Ilio in the distance. Eventually the path arrives at the Bolt Glass Monolith and the junction with the pig track. The path now runs along the edge of the ridge that provides several photo opportunities over Llyn Glaslin and Llyn Lladdau. And back towards Kriebgoch with the Gladers beyond. As the path approaches the summit, it runs very close to the railway line. And in poor visibility, some walkers opt to walk along the tracks. This practice is considered to be very dangerous, adds to track erosion, and in severe conditions has resulted in fatalities. From the railway line, the summit is a couple of minutes walk away. The Snowden Ranger starts from alongside the youth hostel that is situated on the A4085 between Petersgarman and Reed V. 
Pain display car parking is available just across the road, together with public conveniences and a National Park Information Board. The start of the route is marked by a public footpath sign and this initial section crosses a stile and leads up to the Welsh Highland Railway where there is a convenient platform for visitors wishing to alight and walk the range of path. After running alongside the railway for about 100 metres the path bears right over a level crossing. The narrow gauge Welsh Highland Railway reopened this section in August 2003 and now a mixture of diesel and steam locomotives carry passengers between Carnarvon and Haverdell Llyn. After crossing the railway line, a track leads up to Llynon Farmhouse, where this old water wheel provided the power to grind gorse and corn. After bearing right at a large boulder, the path runs behind the farmhouse and begins to climb steadily through open fields. After zigzagging for a little while, fine views open up to the south and the three peaks of Moyl Slevin, Moyl Arogov and Moyl Hebog. The path rises steadily and it's not long before the waste tips of the Glenaravon slate works can be seen on the hillside. While across the valley, the 695 metre high Manith Drusikoid towers over Llyn Crethlin. As the path begins to climb more steeply, it's worth looking back over this lower section to appreciate the views towards Manith Maur and the lake. Conditions underfoot now become rockier and the National Park Authority has found it necessary to lay flagstones along this section to help combat erosion. The track continues to climb and the spoil tips of the Glenaravon Slate Works draw ever closer. Far below the path, the Welsh Island Railway continues to ferry passengers through the scenic countryside. The track begins to level out for a little while and another footpath bears off over the eastern flank of Voilgorg towards Llamberis. The way ahead now swings round to the left to reveal Bolch Cumbroinog and the full majesty of the Llechog Ridge, Cum Clogwin and the summit of Snowdon can be appreciated even from this distance. After crossing a stream, the path winds its way over the lower slopes of Molking Horion and arrives at the foot of Bolkumbroinog. Off to the right, Llyn Fananagwas guards the entrance to the Cum and the start of a zigzag section that rises steeply over the slopes of the Clogwin. After some scrambling, we eventually reach an exposed windswept plateau 
high above the cliffs of Clogwin Virarvi. From this point there are fine views towards the Llamberis path rising up to Clogwin station with a garn beyond. The well marked path now climbs gently towards a stone monolith that marks the junction of the Snowdon Ranger with the mountain railway. After crossing the railway line, the path bears off to the right and leads up to the Bulk Glass Monolith and the junction of the Llamberis path with the pig track. As we have seen earlier, the merged paths run along the ridge high above Thing Glaslin and the summit is a gentle 15 minute walk away. Snowdon Mountain Railway rises through 961 metres and covers a distance of 4.6 miles. The single track has passing places at Hebron, Halfway and Clogwin and on a busy day several trains can be seen at various places on the line. The 800 mm gauge track consists of double rack rails while each locomotive is equipped with tooth pinions or cogwheels which engage the rack and provide the necessary traction. Strangely the carriage is not actually coupled to the engine but simply rests against it. This is a precaution so that if the engine was to leave the track the coach which has its own brakes need not follow it. The first passenger train ran on April the 6th, 1896, a day that following a derailment saw the line's only fatal accident. Ironically, the person who died did so when he jumped off the train, while the passengers who kept their seats remained unharmed. The station terminus is found on the outskirts of Flamberis, and the complex houses a ticket office, cafe and souvenir shop. Tickets are issued for specific departure times and the service operates from the middle of March to the beginning of November, but only when weather conditions permit. During peak periods it is essential to book well in advance as most trains are filled to capacity. The first train of the day is always the works train that carries drinking water, diesel and catering supplies to the summit. It then returns at midday with Havada Rurry's rubbish. Meanwhile, the steam locomotives are fired up, ready for the day ahead. The first passenger train usually departs at 9am with a single coach carrying 55 visitors. The journey to the summit takes approximately one hour. Trains then wait for 30 minutes before returning to St. Berries, making a round trip of two and a half hours. Passengers who stay on the summit for longer than 30 minutes are not guaranteed a return seat. Shortly after leaving the station, a 14-arched viaduct carries the train high above the waters of Avonhoek and soon arrives at the 20-metre-high Kainantmaud waterfall that provides the first of many photo opportunities. After passing through Hebron station, the landscape soon opens out offering sweeping views of the Volgor and Molking Horion.
After crossing over a bridge, the line rises above the Llamberis path and enters a deep cutting. And it's not long before the cliffs of the Clogwyn appear ahead. The line rises steeply after passing through Halfway Station. And on the left-hand side of the train, you can look down into St. Berry's Pass. While on the right-hand side, there are sweeping views back over the valley to St. Berry's and beyond. At the top of the steep climb, we arrive at Clogwyn Station, the third and final passing place on the line. Trains stop here for a few minutes to allow passengers to alight before beginning the steep ascent to Havadarari. At a height of 779 metres, this is where trains terminate when weather conditions on the summit are inhospitable or when the wind speeds exceed safety limits. It is along this section of track just above Clogwyn Station that the opening day accident of 1896 occurred when a locomotive descending from the summit became derailed and plunged over the edge of the ridge. Two climbers who were making their way up through Cum Glass later told how they were aware of a boulder falling from the mountain, only to find that it was a steam engine that had appeared out of the clouds. As the train continues to climb steadily, it clings to the hillside above the sheer cliffs of the Clogwin. And passengers on the right-hand side are rewarded with spectacular views across the valley and into the Cum. As the railway approaches the summit, it meets up with the Flamberis path once more and eventually arrives at the station platform. Important to remember that visitors with return tickets only have 30 minutes on the summit before their train departs for Flamberis. Passengers staying longer than this are not guaranteed a seat on a later train. The Watkin Path is considered to be one of the more strenuous ascents and while most of the route is pretty straightforward, the final 100 metre climb to the summit involves scrambling over a steep scree slope. The Watkin Path originates at Pont Bethania in the Gwynant Valley, about three miles to the northeast of Bithgellert. Car parking is available alongside the A498, together with public conveniences. The start of the path can be found after crossing the road at the southern end of the car park. Here a flight of steps leads to a pleasant woodland track that runs above the National Trust owned Havadatlan Farm that was acquired following a successful public appeal in 1998. The Watkin Path runs the entire length of the Havadatlan estate that extends all the way to the summit of Snowdon. After crossing over a stream, the path soon arrives at a large iron gate where it joins up with the original track coming up from the right. 
it then swings round onto the old donkey path. As the track continues to climb, some waterfalls come into view on the right, and Combs Land begins to open up ahead. The Watkin Path is named after Sir Edward Watkin, a 19th century railway magnate and Liberal MP. He used to escort guided parties to the summit from his summer lodge in Nanquinant. Although the path is now considered a tourist attraction, it was originally constructed to service the slate and copper mines further up the valley. And the remains of the old inclined railway that ran up to the South Snowdon Slate Quarry can still be seen on the hillside. The lower stages of the path swing round in a large crescent and after cutting through the track bed of the old railway begin to rise more steeply. The Watkin is one of the most physically demanding routes as it starts from the lowest point, some 58 metres above sea level, and then climbs through a height of 1,027 metres. As the track continues to rise, another path forks off to the right across a stone footbridge before continuing up onto Slewith. For film buffs, this next section might be more recognisable as the Khyber Pass, as seen in the film Carry On Up the Khyber, as location sequences for the film were shot here in 1968. The path climbed steadily alongside the river, whose natural force was harnessed to drive a water wheel that provided power for the Havadus land mine. The ruins of the old processing shed where the copper ore was ground and graded can still be seen clinging to the rocks. After passing a small waterfall, the gradient begins to level out and the ruins of some miners' cottages can be seen on the far side of the river. The way ahead rises gently as it leads up to an old iron bridge and soon arrives at the ruins of Plas Cum Slan. The building was home to the manager of the South Snowdon Slate Works and during World War II the house was used for commando training exercises before the D-Day landings. Today two of the walls still bear the scars of the bullet holes they left. Just beyond Plascombe Plan is a large outcrop known as the Gladstone Rock. Named after Prime Minister William Gladstone, who at the age of 83 addressed a large crowd here at an opening ceremony in 1892. The event is now commemorated by this large slate plaque. The Gladstone Rock is only an hour's walk away from Pont Bethania and provides an interesting excursion for visitors not wanting to complete the whole route or when conditions higher up on the mountain are unfavourable. After leaving the Gladstone Rock the path rises gently and the remains of the old tramway that used to carry slate down from the South Snowdon Quarry can be seen on the far side of the valley that is dominated by the towering slopes of Araran, standing at a height of 747 metres. We now arrive at the ruins of the South Snowdon Quarry that was worked between 1840 and 1880. Parts of the old barracks still remain 
and this is where the miners would have lived from Monday morning through to Saturday lunchtime. Across the valley are the old dressing sheds and workshops, where the slate would have been loaded onto wagons before being taken along the tramway and down to Pont Bethania. At its peak, the quarry produced a wagon load of dressed slate every day, but the high transportation costs of sending the slate to Porthmadoc resulted in its closure in the early 1880s. The ruined buildings of the South Snowdon Quarry mark the start of a much steeper climb. The path now bears sharply to the right, and it's very important that you do not follow an apparent shortcut off to the left, as this leads to a dead end in the old quarry workings of Cum Tregallan, an area that is littered with deep pits. As the path climbs steadily, the old tramway can clearly be seen running along the far side of the valley to the old quarry workings far below. The going now becomes much steeper, but you are rewarded with fine views back over the valley towards Araran. We now reach the start of a strenuous zigzag section, where the way ahead is well marked with cairns, but the summit is still a deceptively long way away. After more zigzagging through rocky terrain, we finally reach Bulch Kiliai, and a junction with a path coming down from the western flank of a Llywydd. After bearing left at this point, the path crosses a gently rising ridge and arrives at Bulcha Scythi, the Pass of Arrows. This section provides a superb vantage point over the Llywydd Ridge, while far below Llyn Llydaw lies contained within the Snowdon Horseshoe. And this is a good place for viewing the miner's path as it rises up from the Britannia Mill. At the far end of the ridge we arrive at the base of the steep scree slope. The recommended route, which involves some scrambling, cuts across the hillside at an angle of 45 degrees. At the top of the scree, we arrive at a stone monolith on the Bulk main ridge. At this point, there are breathtaking views back over Cum Llan, with the Watkin path climbing up onto the lower slopes of the Llywydd. Watkin now merges with the Reed the path coming up from the Llechog Ridge, which overlooks Cum Clogwin and Llyn Cwetlin. Although the summit is only a 15 minute walk away from the monolith, this last part of the ascent is quite steep and very rocky underfoot. Visitors to the summit should remember that the weather can change remarkably quickly to produce potentially dangerous conditions for those who are ill-equipped and unprepared. In fine conditions, the summit offers breathtaking scenery in all directions. But whatever the weather, you can always be sure that the mountain will be a very special place.